I am so ready for literally anything to start shaking up the GPU market, and while I don't think that Intel entering the discrete desktop GPU segment is going to solve, solve all of our problems, or problems are more crypto-based, more competition, more graphics cards out there, all of that can only be good, even if it's not a full solution. But what kind of performance are we looking at? Well, interestingly, it looks like we have a new leak just posted a few hours ago. Um, this was found by 188, and the, I, don't, I don't know, I guess this is Momo uh, US, okay? Um, but I don't think this is necessarily the person who performed this benchmark, but they uh, found it at least in the Sys software, C software. I'm not real familiar with this benchmark tool, but this is a benchmark database, and we find Intel's Arc A380 graph card in that. And according to this tweet, we get some stats and then we can figure out where does this rank. Now, uh, this is getting us uh, one, uh, 1,024, I guess that, that the shader processors or I don't know, this is the 128C. Now it's reporting as C, but I think Intel brands these as execution units. So this looks like it's probably the 128 execution unit model, 2.45 gigahertz, which I know clock speed doesn't necessarily mean anything given the different architectures will get a different amount of you know instructions per clock or whatever it is but the point is you know 2.45 sounds pretty high at least like we're not we're not uh, really low clocked here one megabyte of l2 cache and then this is weird 4.8 gigabytes of ram is being reported which is strange why we wouldn't get four or five or six or eight you know like like 4.8 is a weird number there but that's what they're reporting now you can jump into the actual benchmark leak here and I'm going to I'm going to be honest here I'm not real familiar with this particular benchmark suite but it does appear that if you go into the just kind of general uh, general GPU processing and compare it versus other graphics cards this comes out kind of in between an RTX 3050 and 3050 Ti and if you're like wait the 3050 isn't even out yet we're talking laptop GPUs now this is probably a desktop GPU from Intel, but the performance level, at least on this particular benchmark, which by the way, does appear to have been uploaded very recently, but we don't know if these are, you know, finalized drivers from Intel, which could impact things. And once again, this is just one particular benchmark. But again, looking at just the general GPU processing, it puts it kind of between a RTX 3050 and 3050 Ti laptop performance. And you might be like, well, that's not very good performance. Yeah. But this is the 128 execution unit model. And that's a big deal because according to all the leaks that we've been seeing, uh, it, there should be a 512 execution unit top end model from Intel. So that means that this is one of the really, really low end. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if we see one cut down even slightly further than this, like a cut down 128 uh, execution unit model that really only has about 96 execution units. I'd also expect us to see like a 256 execution uh, model and then one in the like kind of between the 256 and the 512 at uh, 300 and something. I forget what the exact number should be. But that's kind of what we'd expect here. Now the naming scheme here, we're seeing it reported as a A380. Um, I, I don't know what that means. And so are they going to increase the first, I guess A is telling us that it's the Alchemist series, right? We know that they're going to go with like an ABCD um, architecture names over the next few years. So the next one would be like Battle Mage. So I, I guess the 380, they'll probably have like a you know, a 500 series and a 700 series. I think that that's how they'll distinguish between their 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 ends. Whereas the other brands seem to be going with like, you know, Nvidia does the 80 at the end and then the series number in front. I think Intel's using the, the letter to indicate the series number. Anyway, I'm very excited for what Intel does here, especially with their XCSS technology, which has, uh, I believe they, they poached one of the uh, developers of DLSS and that this will have, uh, well, it will function best on Intel GPUs. It should have some fallback support to a lot of uh, other modern GPUs, including AMD and Nvidia um, as a DLSS competitor. So I'm curious what that does to the overall market, especially in the competition on super resolution technology. Anyway, the link to this benchmark will be in the description to my video. Um, and I'm curious what you guys think about this. Again, this particular model isn't mind blowing performance or anything like that. That's a, and again, the kind of a weird uh, memory amount but I'm just really excited to see them getting here into this market. Now in some other quick GPU related news, 
Uh, we could also jump in with the, uh, we should be expecting to hear about the 6500 XT coming soon from AMD. I believe their press conference is tomorrow and I'm hoping that we'll hear about this. Leaks are suggesting uh, that this will actually be launching around January 19th. And we have a lot of leaks suggesting what the, what the specs are gonna be, which would give us a rough idea on the performance. Again, because it's gonna be definitely a lot less than a 6600. It's cut down significantly. I've reported on this in the past, so I don't wanna dive in too much here. Uh, but with only four gigabytes of, of VRAM, which is, is limiting, but also means it's not gonna be a great miner, which could help its performance. I believe you need more than four gigabytes to really uh, actually mine Ethereum efficiently. Um, because of the DAG size on that. I'm not a mining expert, but that, that could help us a bit. And we'll also expect to see the 6400 coming in the future. And I believe uh, we should be seeing a desktop version of a 3050 or something along those lines coming from NVIDIA. Now we're also from NVIDIA going to be seeing a 3090 Ti. And what's interesting about that, I report on this in the future, is that apparently we got some leaks showing that the Kingpin model is going to require dual 12 pin power connectors. Now, so Kingpin models, uh, Kingpin obviously being a, a overclocker, uh, this is a model that's designed to allow crazy overclocking and dual 12 pin connectors could allow for some insane power. So theoretically, this could consume up to 1,275 watts of power. Now that doesn't mean that it will consume that much, but those power connectors could theoretically deliver that much performance. So, hey, you know, if you're super into overclocking, great. If you want to, uh, you know, run a space heater in your room, great. <laughs> you know, <laughs> your uh, GPU can serve two purposes. Um, now also, um, switching over more to the CPU side of things that, that we're seeing leaking ahead of CES, uh, we should be seeing again the 12400. Um, uh, we've seen, I've already reported on a bunch of benchmarks on this, but one, one thing I see people arguing about in the comment section is, yeah, but on Intel you have to buy a cooler. No, the 12400, the non-K series here, are going to come with coolers, but are the stock coolers any good? We do see some uh, leaks here of uh, the stock cooler being tested, and it not exceeding 81 degrees Celsius in long stress tests like Cinebench or Blender. So not going over 81C, that's fine. Um, I believe they also got into some uh, sound tests, right? So, okay, it keeps it cool, but at what noise cost? And it didn't seem too terrible. Uh, there's some videos here uh, and some updates. So again, I'll link this in my uh, article. This even does include, I've already reported on some benchmarks here, so I don't want to go in here too much, but we do see a benchmark here of it going up against the 11400. And the 12400 does seem to do much better than the 11400. That's not surprising. We would expect that. One thing I'll point out to you though on these graphs as a math teacher, which by the way, I need to get to my job here teaching math in a few minutes. So that's why I'm rushing a bit here. But these are guys, when you don't start the chart at zero, then it looks like the 12400 is more than doubling that performance, but look at the actual numbers, 528 and 626. It, it, this, this graph is misleading looking, is what I'm saying here. So, okay, so when you actually start from zero, you see that the differences here are, are much, don't look as big, right? You, you, see, you see what I'm saying? 1618, 1403, this is not doubling the performance. So anyway, you can look through these, these charts, but don't get thrown off by that visual. There's my inner math teacher, uh, you know, <laughs> helping you guys out there, because this is one of the ways that you can lie through a visual chart. I'm not sure if that was intentional here, um, but anyway, um, yeah. Apparently this uh, Jawara Media is the original source of those charts. Now we also see Lisa Su showing off a, uh, a, a picture of a new chip. Now we're expecting this to be the new laptop chips, the uh, 6000 series laptop APUs based on the Zen 3 Plus architecture, I believe. And these should co go up to eight core 16 thread and should be the first Ryzen chips that'll boost up to five gigahertz uh, by design, which is pretty cool. And these should also be featuring RDNA 2 graphics in their, um, for the, the graphics in their APU design and support DDR5 memory. And if you're doing an APU design where you have that shared memory with the GPU, going up to DDR5 is gonna be a big deal here. So I'm really interested to see that. And we should be seeing more information for that coming out tomorrow on January 4th. 
So CES kicking off. And the last thing I've seen kind of leading into CES uh, that seems really interesting to me is on the monitor side. Uh, so, so you guys know if you watch my channel that I'm really into my OLED, my LG C1 OLED, but 48 inches is really big for a lot of people's setups, but are there any good smaller 4K monitors? I like OLED, but mini LED is the best competitor to OLED. And it's looking like Samsung is going to be offering a 32 inch size 4K curved, um, 1000 R curvature on this. That is a quantum mini LED and apparently goes up to 2000 nits peak brightness. Um, this could be a really interesting screen for people wanting mini LED on a 240 hertz uh, 4K display. That is really interesting. So this is one I'm definitely going to be following. I'm hoping for good things. And uh, I've got to get to work teaching math, so uh, bye. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think in the comment section and have an excellent day.